Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Well, Project M&M, the Mercury Makeover, is back in the shop. You're probably wondering, why didn't we check the brake fluid or the power steering fluid when we changed the oil? That's kind of normal. Well, if you remember, the car's been sitting for two years, so we knew we were going to flush the system. It's probably bad, and if that's not evidence enough, let me show you this. This is really, really cool. I got this at rockauto.com. This is a brake fluid tester, and what this actually does, it checks the moisture content in the brake fluid, and this one's unbelievable. I checked a little bit earlier. Watch this. Stick that joker in there. Man, I'm all the way up to four. Red's bad. Green is good. This thing's bad. It's full of moisture. We need to get the fluid out of there. Tom, what's the best way to do that? There's a bleeder valve at each corner that I'll just take off and, and let the, uh, the fluid drain out with gravity. It'll take some time, but we'll get most of it out. Then when we install the new rotors and pads, we can bleed it properly, get the, the uh, system completely full of fresh new fluid. So I'll move to the back now. Whether it's drum or disc brakes, you got to bleed each corner. Now there's two good reasons why we're actually changing that brake fluid. The first one is, like Tom said, it could become contaminated. You know, some people, they put transmission fluid in there or it just comes contaminated with different chemicals that get into the brake fluid. Now what does that do? It actually deteriorates the seals. And you can see them right here. I got a cutaway of a master cylinder. And what you have is a primary piston and you have a secondary piston right here. Now these seals, this is what holds the fluid in the high pressure chamber versus the low pressure chamber. So just think about this for a minute. If you're pushing your brake pedal down and these brake fluids all contaminated and ate away at these seals, what's going to happen? It's going to bleed by this high pressure chamber and it's going to go into the low pressure chamber and your pedal slowly going to go to the floor. That's reason number one. Now reason number two, it's hygroscopic. Well, what does that mean? It absorbs water and when it absorbs water, Tom said that lowers the boiling point and that brings us to our fluids. Now you got different choices in fluids as well. You got dot three, dot four, dot five and dot 5.1. That's a lot of different fluids, but what you need to know is dot five is silicone based that use in special applications dot three dot four and dot five point one are all glycol based but the higher the number the higher the boiling point so what you want to do is you want to put the brake fluid in that matches or exceeds the number that we're dealing with Tom we got to turn our attention to the power steering fluid I mean that uses fluid as well right and it's not just the simple rule that Ford's took type F transmission fluid and, and GM and Chrysler took one kind of fluid there could be different fluids for different years model years, there's different fluids for Hyundai and and GM and all the different brands now, so you really have to check and see if you have the right fluid for your vehicle. Yeah, definitely, and it's also a fluid, so it's going to break down over time. Now we can get it out of there, we can use the suction gun and we can get it out of there, you can show us what you're doing. Yeah, and just repeatedly suck it out and then once we, uh, we get it out, we can put a new fluid in and then we can uh, get the air bubbles out by turning the the wheel from lock to lock repeatedly and that should uh, r remove most of the, the air in the system. Now you could do it that way or we can go ahead and remove the actual return line, crank it over, pump it out. Why are we doing that? Well, if you look right here, this is pretty cool. This is a cutaway of a power steering pump. And today, Tom, the tolerances are super clear inside of there. I mean, they're tight. I mean, old pumps, you could get away with some rough fluid. Today, you can't. They're vein style pumps. So when this thing goes around, little centrifugal force is going to fling the veins out and that debris is going to get caught up there. You're going to ruin a pump in a heartbeat, not to mention a rack and pinion or a gearbox. You're putting all that fluid through. So it's a good idea. We're changing in ours. Now another thing we want to do is like you said, bleed it. Now that's important too. We'll bleed the brakes later when we're talking about that. Stick around when we get down to doing the brakes. But you said you can turn it from stop to stop. That's going to aerate the fluid and get it all out. That's a good thing. We can also use a vacuum pump. I can put it right in here and I can pump it up, run the car a few times and this is going to suck all the air out of there. It's a new method but it works really, really well. What about those hydraulic pumps? Well, yeah, we hear on new cars they have electric power steering, so you think, oh, well, hydraulic fluid's gone. Well, a lot of them are electro-hydraulic, so, so there's an electric motor that powers the pump versus a belt. So you still have the fluid you need to change periodically, and, and we can look in the catalog and see how those look, the different, that there's fully electric, there's, there's a hydraulic electric mix, and, and they, the systems have been around since the 90s. It's really nothing all that new, the electric hydraulic systems. Well, let's go check it out at rockauto.com. Well, we changed our brake fluid and we changed our power steering fluid. But you know, some cars don't even have power steering or electro power steering. How can Rock Auto help us there? Well, yeah, there's lots of different variations now. You may have electric power steering, but it's actually electric 
pump assist uh, pushing hydraulic fluid around. Right. So, so you still have hydraulic fluid to change. We did a rockauto.com newsletter, we did an article on this and, and showed some examples. He, here's a, a completely electric rack and pinion for a Toyota Prius where you have an electric motor there on the rack. And then scroll down a little bit and we have an electric, the system is completely electric, but the motor is actually on the steering column. Yeah rather than down on the rack. And Tom, this is a bit scary. I mean, I'm turning my car. I have no mechanical link to the steering whatsoever, you know. They use torque angle sensors up there to how fast you're turning. But, you know, we've been doing drive-by wires for years, you know, and people don't even realize that there's so much fail-safe built into that that this thing actually has less of a failure rate than actually some of the linkage is going bad. Yeah, it's actually been around quite a few years. Oh, the, the last one I have here is for a, a newer Ford F-150, you know, large vehicle, and you have a big electric motor there on the rack. Imagine that takes a few amps to turn to the left or to the right. <laughs> Here's an example. This is the Toyota MR2 electric power steering pump from the early 1990s. Wow. Where it's, it's pushing hydraulic fluid around, so you have hydraulic fluid to change. So, it, yeah, it's different variations of electric power steering have been around a long time. Well, that's awesome, Tom. You have all the options there. Well, stick around. There's plenty more Tech Garage when we return right after this break.